What's up guys, Zach man, doing a quick video update, Micro Profits FX coming at you. We're going to do a video on trend lines and how simple it is and the best way and profitable way of trading for X currencies or probably any or any market, I guess. I haven't really done the stock market, but anyways. So, pretty simple. I got a trend line right here going that way and I got a trend line down here going that way and I got a yellow one down here and I got a red one right there and then like a purple, pink, whatever you want to call that one right there. So... Those are my trend lines for the Euro USD I'm looking at. I'm actually going to be looking to sell after the market settles down. Because uh, if I zoom in here, you can kind of see how we did close out of the trend line. And we broke through some support down here. So it uh, looks like it's a way for it to wick and turn red anyways. But And if we kind of get to a higher time frame, let's look at the daily. You can see that kind of broke out uh, of that as well. So... Uh, we're definitely might be in a selling opportunity. I'm going to keep an eye on it. But if we go down to the hour one now, we'll look at that one. So I just kind of look at the highest time frames and I kind of break it down to the smallest ones. Obviously, it did break to the upside on there. So I'm going to kind of, if it breaks through this trend line, I'm definitely going to take the trade right away. But um, we'll go down to the half hour. Okay, it did break out of that one. That one. It's not quite. What time is it? You know what? Let's do it. And the five minute. So the five minute one is my best entry that I like to. You know, let's look at the spread on what this is right now. Tick chart. Whoops. I want the spread. There we go. So let's look at the euro. It's five. okay. Good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just enter the cell now. There you go. You guys get to see me in like a live trade. All right. So I'm going to sell that. Now let's take a look at where I want to make profit. So basically, I'm going to take this. Pretty sure it's just going to break through that. So we're just going to go ahead and put her down here. Now that. Obviously, it's probably not going to get. I'll probably end up closing it before it even gets there. But um, that is the trade that I'm taking, and I'm pretty much showing you why. Uh, because, like I said, it broke through the uh, support, and obviously, it broke through that trend line, and it's in a lower low compared to that one. It's a lower high compared to that one compared to that one. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. So it's pretty simple, pretty basic. If we zoom out, we get a better, uh, bigger picture of actually what's going on. So obviously we have the high, high, uh, the lower high, lower high, and now the lower high in this area. And then obviously we do have a lower uh, low from this support, but then we do have a higher low and now we have a higher low and it's pretty much that, but this one is a lower low compared to that one. So I have a feeling that it's going to kind of go back down and touch this area and maybe even go lower. I don't know. But um, and then, uh, so I do use the trend lines. I use the support and resistant indicators. And you can find these on Google. Just Google trend lines, MT4 indicators for free. Don't ever pay for crap because it's free. There's a lot of free crap out on the Internet. Same thing with the support and resistant line areas. You can find those. Google those. You get those for free. OPV that's already on uh, set up in the MT4 already has an indicator that they have. Um, I did add, I do add moving averages. Uh, you can pretty much get away with a 200 uh, moving average uh, just because uh, I don't need all these other ones I could probably do without as well. Uh, I don't normally, I mean, I do use them for trading, but I don't use them for every trade. But obviously, uh, this lets me know that it's obviously a downtrend market because it went uh, below my moving averages. So uh, when it does get close to crossing over, I expect big moves. That's why I do use it. Like right here, obviously, big move because it went up. And then obviously, when it closed down, it had a big move down. So um, that just kind of lets me know if there's a big move coming as far as that goes. But otherwise, it doesn't matter during this when they're over that because the market moves up and down, lower lows, higher highs, and the trend line. So that's the major uh, majority of my trading is 90%, 95% of it is just the trend line. So uh, I do have some RSI and a MACD uh, divergence indicators because I did trade a little bit of that. I don't do it as often no more. Um, I just have them on the chart just to, just in case I do see something I like. But um, just a kind of another indicator to use just to verify everything. But it's, it's mainly just using trend lines. Like I said, that's 95% of it. So um, that 
is me entering the trade. You saw that. So basically, like I said, you just zoom out and then you can kind of zoom in and, or uh, not zoom in, zoom out, but go higher time frames to lower time frames. Make sure everything's lining up and then enter your trade. How to determine your lot size. When do you determine your stop? When do you determine your take profit? Well, I kind of explain the take profit, um, but I am not setting a stop loss because I manually already know it in my head and I'll manually put it in if it goes negative. Um, and how that works is, let's say I have $250 in my account that I'm starting to trade with. I'm an aggressive trader, so I'm gonna do 0.05%, so I take 250 times uh, 5%. That gives me a trading risk of $12.50 I'm willing to risk per trade. Um, so basically, I take 1250 um, and I divide that by whatever you want for a stop loss for how many pibs. So if you like to trade a stop loss and let's say you only like to trade, you want a stop loss at 200 pibs, you enter 1250 divided by 200. That gives you a lot size of six to trade. That means you have um, always round down, never round up um, just because I said so. Uh, but yeah, so you'd be doing a trade of six lots basically. Now, here's the thing though. I recommend not doing it that way, but that's what you could do it because I usually do a PIB of stop losses right around anywhere from three to 500, depending on where the next uh, higher, higher, lower, low is. Um, so obviously like on this trade, if we zoom back in here, um, technically the next it would be back up here. So my stop loss would be about 800 or so. Um, but I don't, either that or the trend line, one of the two. So. Uh, but usually after, if it starts to go back that way, I'll just look at the smaller time frame, see what's happening, just to verify, otherwise I'll let it ride. But um, I do know when to close them out. Um, and I usually have multiple trades going on. Um, but right now, we just got this one because that's what I'm just working on because I saw that. Uh, but anyways, so that's how you determine your stop loss. Now, when to take profit. Obviously, you saw me uh, put a take profit area, which I usually do for all my trades. Very seldomly does it actually get triggered or hit. <clears throat> during my trading because I don't like to hold on to trades for more than a few days uh, just because there's always things are moving higher highs lower lows pullbacks um, all that fun stuff and I'd rather get into as many opportunities as I can to make as much profit as I can so um, I set goals for myself so if you, again if you're starting with $250 and let's say you want to double that account um, in one month not like in the one trade so let's say I want to make $250 this month so I can double the account. So you take $250 divided by there's four weeks in a month. So you divide that by four. That gives you $62.50 that you need a profit per week. But let's break it down even more. There's five days in a week. Um, and there's actually 6.5 trading days in a week. But uh, let's just, for the sake of argument, five. That means for each trade, you pretty much need a, well, if you're risking... 1250, you need a one to one reward risk ratio, is what it needs to be. So you need to make 12, you need to make profit 1250 a day in order to hit your goal. It's pretty simple. So that, and then you, as soon as you hit your goal, you take that profit and you move on to the next one. Because I guarantee you, these come more than if you were to hold on to it. Oh, it's going down, down, down. And then you look away for a little bit. And the next thing you know, there's a pullback. And now you're back to break even. Trust me, that's happened to me many times in the past that I've been trying to figure this crap out. So now, if I'm when I'm trading and I have multiple trades out, I can have one trade at 250. I can have the other trade. Oops. I can have the other trade at five dollars. I can have uh, one trade at uh, negative fifty dollars. It doesn't matter. As soon as my goal of what I wanted for that day or week or whatever is met, I close out every single one of them doesn't matter if it's a negative a dollar or two three thousand doesn't matter what the numbers are as long as the whole profit of what i my goal was is hit i close out everything and then i move on and I look for the next trade at the next whatever it may be for the next trend line so that is how i've been successful and profitable of doing this i think that's the best way to do it uh, again i could be wrong i don't know i've only been doing this for or I've, well, I've been tra trying to trade, I should say, for the last few years, and I've failed. Well, I had some success, but none like I've had right now, and tell you that much. But um, So that is kind of what I do. Um, like I said, for the last three months, I've been pretty profitable. I've been, this is my 12th week trading. I started with, on February 
second or fourth or whatever it was. I deposited his $23 in my account, and then from the rest, it's history. Now, I think right now I'm at like 6800 or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then this is how I've been doing it. I've tried other ways of doing it and failed miserably. I've tried indicators. I've tried EAs. I've tried um, the moving average indicators anyways. I mean, obviously, I'm using some indicators now, but um, I'm doing a more simplicity way of doing it. I'm um, not like putting, like waiting for the holding my trades and waiting for it to go all the way, you know, 80,000 pips down and then cashing out. I'm just kind of hitting goals, taking everything out. So um, find the trend. You got to have patience when you're looking for the trend lines. You got to have patience. Wait for it to close. Wait for setups. Um, that's the biggest key to this. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I was going to talk about. I pretty think I got pretty much all that covered now. So pretty simple and easy, guys. Um, you just got to have patience. I've probably said um like a million times, but that is the best way, I think, of trading trend lines. Like I said, I'm not no guru or, you know, I, I can't say that I have like five years of experience of doing this. But right now, for what I'm doing, it's working and it's doing a hell of a job. And I'm pretty proud of it so far. So we'll see how this one does. But right now, like I said, I'm in Nero. Um, I'll probably look through this here after I do the video and kind of see if there's anything else I can do. But um, normally, what too, when you when you take trades like these, you'll see uh, like I know the um, Australian dollar that I got into yesterday, two days ago. Um, all of them showed, well, all of about five of them, five of the charts that had to do with uh, the Aussie, all showed kind of similar to what this is showing. And pretty much I entered a sell on all of them, and then that made me about two grand in eight hours. So <coughs> I was pretty impressed on that one. But yeah, and then there's been times before when I had the smaller amount for the my balance, and then I you know could only trade so much. But where I got you know five six hundred dollars out of it too, just because you know either like I said when these things close above a trend line, or even when they get close to it and they wick out, you know when to sell, and then they come down, and then you kind of buy, but. You gotta follow the wedge too and all that stuff, but mainly I just kind of trade the breakouts of the trend line, really. Um, but again, not all of them are gonna be winners. Like I said, you gotta expect that they're all, not all winners. So I think uh, statistically, I'm 55% in a win ratio. So yeah, not very good. But hey, it's 55%, so it's better than 45%, right? So and it's still profitable. So that's all that matters. As long as you're profitable, it's all that matters in this game. So thanks for watching. Any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, have a great day and happy trading.